at the gallery or speaker view to view all panellists or just the person who's speaking. And then in the breakout rooms which follow, you will be able to use mute, unmute and the camera buttons at the bottom of your screen and also the chat box. In the breakout discussions, we'd like to create a place where everybody has the opportunity to contribute their voice and ideas. So please do contribute and allow others to contribute as well. The panel session at the start will be recorded and also live streamed on YouTube, um, but not the breakout room discussions afterwards. If you have any technical problems, please send an email to digital at blueventures.org. And at the end of this session, there will be a short feedback questionnaire and we'd really appreciate it if you could take a moment to fill this in at the end. And so without further ado, I'd now like to introduce our chair for the event, Blue Ventures Technical Advisor on Mangroves, Leah Glass. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, hi, everyone, and belated happy Mangrove Day. Uh, it's a real honour to be chairing this webinar on, uh, on what is such an important topic. We have some wonderful panellists uh, to help get the conversation started and participants from across the globe. Um, each and every one of you uh, have a lot to share, and I'm personally really looking forward uh, to learning from, from you all. Uh, you didn't log on to hear me talk. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce our awesome panel. Um, so joining us today, we have Novi Sagita, who is the co-founder and executive director of uh, Indonesian Foundation Planet Indonesia, who does some really incredible work with uh, mangrove communities in West Kalimantan. Uh, we also have my fellow BV mangrove friend, uh, Lilawa Gret, who leads Blue Ventures Mangrove Work in Madagascar and has been working with coastal communities uh, for almost 15 years now. Last but definitely not least, um, we have Rio Ahmed, um, who is director of uh, the Blue Forest Foundation in Indonesia. And for the last four years, uh, Rio um, has been living and working with indigenous people uh, and the mangroves of the spectacular uh, Lorentz lowland landscape in uh, Eastern Indonesia. So I'm gonna start the discussions with some questions of my own. Um, and then we'll lead straight into questions from, uh, from the participants of the webinar. So Novi, uh, let's start with you if that's okay. Your organization does some really wonderful work supporting locally led mangrove management in Indonesia. Can you tell us a little bit about the kind of, what kind of approaches um, you have found to be successful and particularly why do you think they're successful? Thank you, uh, thank you, Leah, and thank you all for this opportunity this afternoon. I, uh, <clears throat> first, I would like to um, say success, uh, successful, but I think um, I would like to say is like what we believe at the moment appropriate to, uh, to be implementing with the, the work with the community. It's like we are using this a uh, um, uh, platform we are we, call, we are calling it conservation uh, conservation cooperative. Uh, no, are, it's, sorry, just quickly, your microphone's a little bit crackly. I wonder if it's um, if you've got anything resting on it or anything. Sorry. Hello. Hello. That that seems that seems to be a little bit better. Sorry, you continue now. All right. Um, all right. So um, yes, um, I, I uh, will explain uh, about the, the what is it like the approach uh, what you were saying uh, that we are using at the Planet Indonesia to work with the community at the moment. At a, uh, 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 we don't know uh, we if we can say that it's successful, but uh, uh, approach. But at the moment, we think it's a <coughs> approach that we, we believe is appropriate at this time we believe that the, that we can use this uh, to work together with the community at the coastal area this uh, platform we are um, 
we are using, we are established with the community, we call it is a conservation a cooperative. This a um, is a is a, a like a platform. We uh, it's got, uh, uh, like um, what is it like a where we build a commitment uh, from community because um, by far my involvement with the community work from my experience like the the the, the challenges working with the uh, with the communities is uh, I think um, uh, commitment consistencies and also identity. That's why uh, I think uh, me and my friend at uh, Planet Indonesia, I think that this platform, uh, what's it, conservation cooperative, is uh, at the moment the, the answer that we can put uh, to, to to be as the bridge between our organization and uh, with the community where we are going to work with. So uh, with this uh, <coughs> conservation cooperative, it consists it consists with the members of the community uh, where we are working, which is in a coastal area, they are farmers. And then this is uh, from this, we can have like a, uh, what is it, like a commitment from them. Um, and not only commitment, but it's something like uh, for us also is like a, an entry. And at the same time, we think also it's ca it can be useful as an exit uh, program of uh, extra work from us uh, at the end and um, uh, at, the, uh, uh, at this time we are we are working with uh, with the community at the coastal uh, i think now four years uh, no yes three to four years now it is successful in terms of the involvement of the participations of the community and also the the what is it the programs the program that we come uh, agreed together to uh, to work together uh, with the community through the intervention, some, such as I uh, was it like um, uh, using a closures temporary system, closures temporary system, uh, uh, what is it, and then uh, PHE population health and environment uh, literations and um, and uh, what is and a smart patrol as well. And then this conservation cooperative, beside, <clears throat> beside it's, uh, it's become the platform for the community to commit to, to try to answer uh, and then together to define the, their problem in, the, in their local, but and also at the same time can also be function platform that they can learn and then right, and then to, to see the potential uh, uh, resources that they can use to overcome the problems. And this is uh, the, the approach that the uh, planet Indonesia at the moment we are using. And then we are believe this can achieve <clears throat> um, the, what is it like, the objectives of the organization, uh, uh, first ideas, why we want to work with the community to, uh, to create a better uh, condition and uh, economic condition and a welfare at the same time also in uh, to keep maintain and to preserve the dear environment so it's not only can be uh, can be uh, what is a function or benefit only for the community at the moment but only and also for the long run but not, and also not only for uh, the community themselves but also for the big scale in a, in a global way. Um, <clears throat> that is, um, that is uh, um, um, what is it like, um, we said we call it a platform. I think it's a, we call it, a, it's not a approach as well. It's, it is approach, but we call it a, it's a knowledge, uh, it's a knowledge product of a, of a planet Indonesia that we are using this tool to uh, bind, the, uh, what is it, to, to bind the commitment with the community so the, the 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 intervention or the program or the activities that we want to work with the community is not is it doesn't it, it's not only hit and run but it stays there and then when when plan initia uh, has the time to leave and then the community can continue and then doing it according to the their own and their own knowledge resources Thank you. Thank you, Novi. That's really interesting. Yeah, the, con the conservation cooperatives really do sound like a, uh, an innovative approach to, uh, 
to like you say, it's an important foot in the door that kind of like brings everything together, but also a mechanism that uh, that allows the the conservation and the the social structure that the community have worked to develop to continue beyond um, support from NGOs. Thank you so much. That was a uh, that was really interesting. Um, Lelao, uh, I'll move on to you. Um, can you give us uh, an overview of some of the lessons that you've learned through your leadership of Blue Ventures Mangrove work in Madagascar? Okay, uh, thank you, Leah. Uh, I have been working closely with uh, community associations and uh, with authority and uh, government at a different level in supporting local uh, community-led mangrove management and conservation in Madagascar in order to preserve mangrove ecosystem and also to protect um, community livelihoods. Uh, from my experiences about uh, 15 years in supporting local community, I have learned that uh, bottom-up approach and participatory approach is promoting uh, community empowerment and also increasing community involvement, engagement and motivation in governance and management of the natural resources in their um, area. I can see also that uh, through, this, uh, through this approach, community can decide on the activity that they would like to implement and they would like to put in place uh, in their area. Uh, through the participatory approach also, all of the people on the community are involved, uh, including uh, some uh, group who are sometimes marginalized by, um, uh, by the culture and uh, by the society. Um, for instance, the women and the youth are sometimes not listened and not involved in decision-making on the natural resource management. And this approach is addressing that barrier. One of the examples uh, that I can give is uh, the implementation of the DINA. The DINA is local regulation um, or social convention established by community themselves to govern the use and management of uh, natural resources in their area. And uh, at least four or uh, five uh, community part, uh, consultation have been uh, conducted uh, to establish this dinner to ensure that everyone has a voice, everyone uh, are involved on the implementation of this dinner. Once the dinner is um, validated and approved by the community, by the municipality, and by the uh, courts, the community have full power to enforce it uh, through the community, uh, through the DIN enforcement community, which is a group uh, established by community themselves and elected by the community to enforce the DIN. Uh, through this DIN, community uh, feel empowered on the management of uh, their resources because they uh, themselves establish the law and they do control, they enforce the law. Uh, it doesn't require uh, presence of the Department of Forestry Authority to come down on the ground to enforce the DINA or to, to do the forest patrol, but community do it with their own. And um, community feel if, uh, um, if they are able to enforce the DINA and they feel this is uh, this is their resources. This is not government resources. And, um, and they feel empowered on that. And uh, one of the reality in Madagascar also, the government doesn't always have resources that they can help to enforce uh, the law and to do the control. So the key success of the management of resu mangrove resources in Madagascar is uh, the DINA. I think that is uh, the example that I can share because uh, I only given three minutes Leah. So fantastic! Thank you so much, Lal. That was that was really interesting, and so many rich points in that as well. Uh, I found particularly interesting how you were talking about that truly inclusive, uh, locally led management can can help to include more marginalised groups 
um, which I think is really important um, and a really, really good point. And also that your comment about um, improving, uh, improving kind of like enforcement of laws, local laws or national laws uh, through through empowered locally led management is a yeah really some really interesting points that we can take through to the breakout groups. Thank you so much, Alal. Um, so I've got one more question for Rio after this, um, but then really looking forward to asking some questions uh, from the audience. So please, participants online, please feel free to uh, type your questions into the Q&A box and we'll move on to them um, after my last question for Rio. Thank you. Um, so Rio, the organization that you lead has uh, extensive experience related to um, the co-management of mangroves um, between communities and the government in Indonesia. Um, can you tell us like, what are some of the barriers that you've faced in this work and how have you as an organization overcome them? Thank you for the question, Leah. Happy belated mangrove day, everyone. Uh, about the barriers that we feel are quite challenging in the mangrove co-management in Indonesia especially based on our 20 years of experience interacting with communities and stakeholders carrying out uh, rehabilitation program, conservation program, livelihood, environmental education, and other adaptive program based on participatory action research related to mangrove management, is including uh, a large capacity gap between stakeholders involved in mangrove, common, mangrove management. And also the land tenure issues is like big problem issues uh, in mangroves uh, community where there is a problem of overlapping authority and programs that are carried out in mangrove uh, forests. Also the gap between the economic value and the financial value of mangrove is very wide, making many decisions about the conversion of mangrove land how mangrove forests met because of the low financial value or direct value of mangroves. Uh, and also the bears is the presence of companies and uh, farms around mangrove area. This, the presence of companies and farms not only causes change to the environment, but also the perspective and community behavior related to environmental management. So that it will also change the perspective of stakeholders in mangrove community. Mangrove also, the barriers that we face uh, in Indonesia, management that, mangrove management that tends to be top down, it's I think similar that uh, like Lala says and Novia. Uh, tend uh, to be top down and changing policies, rules in Indonesia causes some uh, vulnerability to access community-based management. And we feel the lack of institutional capacity at the site or village level is still low. So when we, when you say how to overcome the barriers, uh, it uh, have a lot answers based on the areas and we need some of the uh, solution. Uh, we need the presence of a uh, facilitator. Facilitator not only uh, like us NGOs, but also the champion from community, from local government, from the management unit, from the uh, we. We uh, in Indonesia have like village facilitator that can uh, help community in the village to build the management plan and uh, development plan. I think that's that is for the various, maybe. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Rio. Yeah, that was a, some really interesting points in there as well. Um, you know, how you know, for locally, as you said, for locally led management to work, mangroves that, like you said, the legislation is complex um, and, uh, you know, governments inherently have, have a large amount of control and that need for uh, close coordination and empowerment of all actors to be able to, to work together is, 
is is really important for coming overcoming that that uh that really quite large barrier. Uh, I've been watching some really good uh, questions come in from the audience, so uh, so let's move on to to them. So the first question for the panelist: um, Do any of the panelists have good examples of mangrove initiatives or activities that have rapidly spread? Um, or been taken up by other communities, uh, and what what kind of conditions do you think um, have has led to that uh, spread? Um, Lilau, I don't know if you can um, have you got anything to to add on that based on your experience in in Madagascar. Like, have you seen any any mangrove initiatives move from one community to another? Uh, thank you, Leah. Uh, I think uh, one of a good example in Madagascar is uh, the management transfer. Um, management transfer is uh, giving full power uh, to the local community to, uh, to manage the mangrove forest in Madagascar. Because uh, the law in Madagascar states that uh, the mangrove is a uh, uh, property of the states, but uh, community can uh, grant it a full power through management transfer contract to manage uh, the mangrove forest in Madagascar. And um, this, manage, uh, this management transfer um, scheme is, um, uh, is spread out in Madagascar based on the um, uh, exchange between community and lots of community within our project area are asking us to support them to um, uh, to secure their rights through management transfer because they can learn from the community from um, hearing a good story on that and they would like to copy the good model. I think that is one of the models that uh, I can, uh, I do have in my mind. That's really great, Lala. No, it's exciting to hear about that, that, um, that spread um, from one community to another, just like by you know, like by by word of mouth or just by hearing about successes and challenges um, and how they've been overcome by other communities. Thank you for that. Um, I've got a question that uh, I'm quite keen to um, to ask Novi um, from the audience. Uh, how do we ensure mangrove conservation when communities have pressing economic and social needs that are not necessarily associated? With successful community mangrove conservation projects, so what? So what? So what? How can we ensure that mangrove conservation happens, even if it isn't the primary need of the of the community? Do you have any thoughts you want to add based on your experience? Um, you're on mute, Novi. Sorry. All right. Um, okay. I think. Okay. I try to answer this. I think it's related to uh, one of the um, of the pro uh, project that we are working with the community through this uh, conservation cooperative. Is a uh, um, we are adopting uh, what is it um, a, a method from uh, Blue Ventures, which is a, a TMRS, you know, temporary uh, marine research system, but we are uh, applying it applying it uh, to what is it to uh, uh, fishermen uh, catch the what is it, mud crabs so we are uh, mud crabs so um okay um when we uh, when we first time when we were adopting uh, this uh, uh, method and then introducing this um this uh, method to a community to the to the community um yeah, they, 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 they were not sure about what we were talking about, like using like a, a closing areas and then what is it benefit because they cannot see it. It can be benefit to uh, what is it like, uh, uh, what is it like, in, like can benefit to them in an economic way. And then, um, well, and then, and then eventually we managed to convince them to, to follow the processes that we have taken. And then we, uh, at, uh, we, at, well, I think it was it was um, for my opinion it was succeeded. We did the we did we did this TMRS the temporary marine reserve system for this uh, mud crabs um, fishermen first time um, 
I think it was uh, successful. Uh, my opinion, it was not about the it was not about the success of the quality, uh, the quantity of the crops or, or the catch, or, but I think the successful of the the community that uh, fall through all the processes, and yeah. then and then to to see to and then able to see the uh, what is it the where this can take them lead them to the understand, uh, to understanding about all their resources that's uh, important for them. And then after the after that we uh, together with them we what is it we do calculation uh, to uh, calculation to show the how much the difference between like uh, before the intervention with this uh, system and after and then after that they just decided let's close all the rivers you know like that instantly they uh, just uh, think like that's 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 what they uh, think that's going to give them. Not only um, what is it like? Uh, not only like uh, increase the the uh, what is it the income, but also like uh, the, the, they can understand like that it, it gave it can give the the what is it the mangrove or the the mangrove as their resources have to be maintained well. In the meantime, not only can say can have can have to give them benefit now now, but also for the long run. That's, I think, uh, my opinion. I think it was quite me. I was so proud that that time, that the that the community managed to see it by themselves. I think that was, I think that's most important for our project. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Navy. Um, I hope it's related. It is, it is very related. Yeah, thank you. And it's really interesting to hear that, like you say, that link between the forest and the and the and the mud crab and that really important uh that important financial resource that is the mud crab, um, and how that kind of is a foot in the door or leads leads you on to more to more conversations about mangrove management and 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 building enthusiasm for local uh for locally led management. Um we don't have much much time left, so I've got one last question, which apparently was um, uh, very popular with the audience. Um, so I'm going to open this up. So whoever wants to add literally 30 seconds. Um, so the final question was, how do we reconcile the global calls for mangrove conservation um, and restoration with the community led initiatives targeting small areas? So how can these community, these small community uh, initiatives help with the global need for um for mangrove conservation so would one of you like to give me a, a quick answer on that Ria, you haven't spoken lalau would either of you like to add anything on that Rio? okay i try to answer the question uh, based on our context to do rehabilitation or restoration program in indonesia uh, our research in Papua that supported by uh, USA called CDR has illustrated the gap between the economic value of mangrove areas and financial value. Economic value calculates value directly or indirectly, while financial uh, value of mangroves calculates only direct uh, value. The gap between these two values is two orders or like 100 times. When we find these uh, two problems emerge from this discovery, uh, one is high economic value in the mangrove area is felt by the community in general, uh, and they have not been able to enjoy this uh, full value, like we know uh, value of carbon is so big and all, uh, all countries are uh, interested to develop the carbon, carbon uh, offset. Uh, due to political condition in Indonesia, this value cannot be exploited yet, cannot be accessed properly yet by community. And also, uh, low financial value uh, that just involve uh, direct uh, values forces local investors and entrepreneurs to convert mangrove lands. Uh, because when we find in, in the field that uh, some mangroves just selling like uh, one, uh, sorry, I will confirm in, uh, in uh, dollar. So it's like $100 per hectare, like that. And 
uh, it's uh, to finding solution to minimize the gap between financial and economic values is important. So we it's can, really... yeah, and it's certainly yeah, needs coordination between the private sector and the public sectors. That is a really important point, um, and it's and that's really it's a really good point to lead us into the to the to the breakout groups. I know we had a lot of questions from the audience that we didn't quite have time to get to. Um, with the panelists, we're going to work together after the workshop to answer some of those questions, and they'll be shared with you in the in the post meeting pack. But really, thank you for all of the great questions that have come in. Um, and particularly thank you to Rio Novi Lalau for your really great uh, thoughts, participation and uh, and discussion today. I've really enjoyed it. I'll hand over to Jenny, who's going to lead us into the second part of the workshop. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Leah. So we're now going to be moving over to the next part of the workshop. So to join the next part, we will need you'll be need to click on the link that's shortly going to appear in the chat. But please don't click on this until I finish speaking, um, because once you click on that link, it will take you straight through into the, bre the breakout room discussions. Once you've clicked on that link, um, it will say you are already in another meeting. Do you want to leave? And so please click yes. And that will take you into the new meeting. If you have any problems with that transition to the new meeting, there's also a link for the next meeting in the email that we sent you yesterday with the joining instructions. So you'll still be able to join if you go to that link there. And as soon as you enter the next meeting, you'll be able to see a poll which contains a list of the barriers which have been brought out by the panel discussion. So please vote on the barrier that you think this group as a community of practitioners is best place to overcome. And then you will be, once you've voted, you'll be automatically placed into a breakout room and you'll have the opportunity to discuss these barriers and how they can be overcome. And each group has already been assigned a barrier. So you'll see that when you join the meeting. Um, so that's it for this part of the meeting. So now it's ready for you to please click on the link that you'll see in the chat box along the bottom of your screen. And then we'll see you on the other side. Thank you very much. <laughs>